Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Kelee Akina, your host and president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Before the COVID-19 uh, lockdowns, Bill Comerford owned four of Honolulu's most well-known restaurant bars. You've heard of them. Kelly O'Neill's, Irish Rose Saloon, Anna O'Brien's, and O'Toole's. But the forced closures during the lockdown years and later heavy taxation led him to sell all but three, and now he's left with only the Irish Rose Saloon. Comerford says he's racked up lawsuits and debt when he was forced to close his businesses. But the latest nail in the coffin is a surprise state tax. It's a bill related to the Federal Restaurant Revitalization Fund and Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program. Bill is now being served with the notice of having to pay taxes on that assistance. During this episode of Hawaii Together, Comerford will discuss the taxes and fees that ultimately toppled his businesses and wiped out his retirement savings that he built up over many years. Uh, these are not happy thoughts, but I'm so grateful for the courage and the stamina of this gentleman and friend, Bill Comerford. Bill, thanks for coming on the program today. Welcome. Very great to see you, Gilly. Wonderful day. Very nice to be able to come out and express my opinion on occasions. It's always good to hear from you. And what you have to say is relevant to all of us here in Hawaii. But first, Tell us a little bit about your background. In particular, how did you get into the restaurant and bar business? And uh, let our viewers know the scope of your success. Well, I was raised in New England, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. My dad had me at the beach at the summer, every summer, and we were 100 yards away from the bar. And my dad raised me in that bar. And my very first job, he took me home and said, son, you're working. I said, when? He says, tomorrow. Where? At the bar. What, till when? Till Labor Day. You know, how much am I making? $20 a week. You know? but that's how I got into the business at a very young age of 12 years old. Pursued it throughout high school and college as a means of, how I say, a means of income. I decided as a history major, I was not going to teach. In my senior year, I walked into restaurant management. And I've been there pretty much ever since. Came to Hawaii in 1979. I uh, became a bartender and bar manager, became bar manager for multiple operations, eventually became bar manager for the Irish Rose Saloon. And when my uh, owner, uh, Jim and Elaine Fessenden, chose to retire, I stepped in and said, I'd be willing to buy it. He, uh, he, I wanted to buy it, and my partner wanted to buy it, and he decided we're going to make you partners. And we've been partners for 23 years. And... Uh, Sadly, uh, we went all the way through everything, built every bar. Uh, we developed our bars as, um, uh, how do I say, not as a, we didn't own the, the, we owned the business, we didn't own the building. So we were lessees in all our operations. But we, every operation we had financed the next operation. So we had four operating bars, a management company that ran them all, which was the key to our success. And then what happened was that we, we encountered, uh, you know, COVID, which kind of shut us down because why? We uh, we gather people, and that was our guilt. No other right. guilt. We did it for years, and uh, gathering people was the sin that you had during COVID. And uh, sadly, uh, they didn't speak to us. They didn't. Uh, our government did, aid, did not aid us for 15 months. It took 15 months for us to get any money. And in that time frame, we fell out of all of our operations. We lost everything. Everything we had, it was all gone. Yeah. You know, Bill, during those COVID-19 lockdown years, what was it like to try to operate and keep your establishments running? It was impossible. Yes, um, our government, as it was, I would say local government, uh, city and county being uh, the mayor as, a, as our head administrator, and uh, with the state, with the governor as the head administrator, they were absolute rulers, and they, they made the call. And they made up the information as they went along. They didn't follow state rules. They didn't follow city and county rules. They made it up based on other, other uh, how do I say, other situations in other areas, like what was happening in California, what was happening elsewhere. They would take something from that and just make up a rule. There's no such rule that we have to have a restaurant have 30% sales of food. Any bar can sell food. I had the permits and everything else. I had the passing permits. So. 
all of a sudden, uh, I started selling hot dogs, and he decided, hey, you have to sell 30% food. Otherwise, you're not a restaurant, which is totally conflicting to every license in Hawaii because it's never been developed yet. So the regulations, regulations during that period of time, the lockdowns, just really didn't make sense and often. Yeah, completely. And they were really harmful. Sure, very much so. Uh, we lost, they closed us uh, in March of 2020, uh, right around St. Patrick's Day. You know, I think St. Patrick's Day was the shutting day. Hmm. We stayed open at midnight that day and then closed the next day. Um, in that time frame, um, we had no, no income at all. There was no source of income. You have to be open as a bar to make an income. So we were closed from that period, and we uh, we were very brilliant in what we did because we had a very good uh, controller. We, in other words, we had a, a, a corporate office that did all our operations, and our controller got us immediately into the PPP programs. We got an immediate uh, ten thousand dollar EITL, which is not going to cover a six and a half million dollar a year corporation, but that's what we started with. And from there, we uh, applied for a $150,000 EIDL, which was uh, a 30-year loan at 1%. And then we went, got into the uh, PPP. And we received it very early because we had our application ready for it. In doing so, uh, we received approximately almost $600,000 for the four bar, four mm-hmm. operations. Now, every bar has 100, you know, the whole four bars takes $100,000 just in uh, expense for rent, insurance, and just the basics. You know, probably your utilities as well. So we received the, uh, the close to six hundred thousand dollars, and that was a federal uh, federal grant in the PPP, and that was coming uh, through through um, our, our U.S. Congress. And one of the stipulations that uh, uh, the Speaker of the House made was that seventy five percent had to go to labor, and not to paying your expenses. Well, in Hawaii, our expense is extremely high. So what that meant was I had to pay three months of, of labor to open for one, one month and a half for, for 40 days. That's how much rent I could pay. So it made no sense. So before they even let us open, we were closed. And all mm-hmm. the money had been expensed because it had paid to the employees to keep them in a job that wasn't there. Well, Bill, at that point, how many employees did you have in these four restaurants? And, and what, what happened? What's happened to those employees? Well, we had 80-plus 80, 80 employees employed at any one given time. Part-timers, full-timers in the corporation, inside each of the bars. Each bar was its own corporation. And we, what we did was we filed our taxes through E&J Lounge Operating Company. And so... We had approximately 150 musicians because that's what we did. We employed musicians every single night, bands, single entertainers, uh, visiting bands, concerts from everywhere, things that we did. And that's what we did as a, a, as a means of making entertainment. That was our business model. So when that came about, we no longer had the 150 employees plus employees as, employee, as uh, contract musicians. And plus we had uh, 85 employees that were put out of work including myself and everybody in the corporation as well, you know, E&J. So the shutdown has oh. not only affected your business, it affected the lives of all of these employees everybody. and contractors who depend on you, and right. their families as well. Well, Bill, exactly. if you don't mind telling our viewers, how did this impact you personally in terms of your own finances? You mentioned to me uh, back then that you, all you had left was your retirement. Uh, what what well, happened? Bill Comerford, as well, a result of lockdown? Um, it's been severe. Um, I, had, uh, I had a laugh because I, uh, I was in the ICU two years in a row prior to it. Ended mm-hmm. up getting uh, COVID and went to ICU for that as well. Uh, so I had health issues. Um, I had no employees to, to use because once you paid them, they were paid, and now they couldn't uh, qualify for unemployment themselves and everything else. So it was a big cha- It was a big challenge talking to all of them, trying to make a decision how it worked. Because I said, we, I told them, I said, we're not going to open in time, you know, for us to be open. So um, going back to me, um, I still have my house. Um, I'll be getting divorced. And I'll be separating and moving away, and I'm choosing to leave Hawaii. 
been here since 1979. It's been very good to me. Uh, had a good corporation. I made money. Uh, I enjoyed the island. I love the people. I love everything here. I gather people. I bring people to my bars all the time. I developed uh, things for the Friends of St. Patrick, a whole Irish community. I did the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I still lead that every year. And uh, I've lost all that. And so um, the bars themselves, people ask me, what would you do for a year? I said I was a beast of burden. As each bar lost its lease or, or passed away, I was moving all the product from one bar to the next bar to the next bar. So by the time uh, we got around to, uh, by December, all our bars were gone. You know? So we were forced to sell Kelly O'Neill's and we were forced to sell O'Toole's. The other two bars, the lease expired. So we did nothing with that. And uh, when we eventually came around to receiving the restaurant relief fund, 15 months later, we had uh, two licenses still valid, but we had no leases. So our landlords asked us to come back and so we could use the money. I took the money just to go back to get out of debt because I was a million dollars in debt at that time, which I was able to do. I got out of debt. But mm. I, should I have done it in Hawaii? I could have took that money to the mainland and just took it up and opened the whole bar system somewhere else and done it. And that's probably what I should have done because of the nature of how Hawaii's uh, government treated me. They ignored me. They quite honestly just ignored us. Every, not just me, everybody in the bar business. And guess what? They ignored all small business. And that's what they did. Truly, they ignored small, small business and took care of their own needs. They went home for 18 months got paid, and came back 18 months later and said, okay, let's go tax everybody. That's pretty much what they've been doing. Well, to what do you attribute the treatment that you received or the, the lack of attention, mm -hmm. uh, at the very least, to the concerns that you and other bar owners had during that pandemic period? Well, there's two very, uh, sadly, very obvious things that they have in Hawaii. And one thing is they say, don't rock the boat. You rock that canoe, you're going to see bad, bad effects from it. So they'll be on your doorstep every day. That's what they've always said about the Liquor Commission. You complain about the Liquor Commission, they will be on your doorstep immediately. It's true. Well, Bill, you, you were not silent. You were willing to talk no. to the media. You were interviewed exactly. on television. You were in the newspaper. And, and do, do you feel that there were negative ramifications of your being willing to speak out publicly? About Absolutely. The government? Absolutely. Um, the mayor realized that every liquor license, he let us open the bars on June 19th. Everybody says, why June 19th? And I said, because every liquor license on the island expired on June 30th. He had us come back, apply for our liquor license again, pay for a, a million dollar liquor liability, pay for our taxes for the past year, but it's open for 19 days in June. I'm sorry, um, not 19 days. It was uh, 11 days in June. And then he let us open 30 days in uh, July before he closed us again. So he let us renew our liquor license and pay for it and pay for our insurance. Then he closed it. So that's a huge problem. But beyond that, because we were in that open period, because I spoke out for two weeks straight, I had liquor inspectors, health inspectors, and police inside the Irish Rose Saloon every single day, all hours, coming in. And they remarked to me, they said, you're doing a really good job here. You're following all the rules. I don't understand why they, we keep getting sent back. I said, well, who, who's the source of the complaint? The mayor's office. Of course, they always call that anonymous, which is nonsense. It was absolutely Mayor Caldwell who was calling that. He had them going in there every single day. I asked the police. I asked the liquor, uh, liquor inspectors. I tried to reach the health inspectors. Health department never returned any call ever, ever. So, so the basis is all that complaints came out of the mayor's office. Hmm. Now, Bill, hey, yeah. the story you've told is bad enough in and of itself. But yeah. you've tried to get yourself back on your feet. Uh, you are doing your best. Recently, you got hit with the knowledge that there's another story. Uh, after you thought everything was starting to settle down, there was yep. what you call a, a surprise tax 
from the State Department of Taxation. Yep. And it had to do with taxing some of the federal funds you received in exactly. the COVID aid program. Can you tell us about, a little bit about that. Explain that. Sure. Well, as I said, I received different monies at different times. But when you're applying for different things during this program, there was limitations on every application you could make. So let's just say I got to the end of my fiscal year of June 30th of 2020. I'm going into the next year and I've renewed my liquor license. I'm trying to apply for more PPP, PPP money. I could receive none. Why? Because they said you're, you're going to be covered by the shuttered venues grant because you have live music. So they're ignoring me that I can get any further funding. So I can't get any more funding. So I'm sitting there waiting and uh, going through the shuttered venues grant. You're trying to do the applications there. And it, it kind of started in that July, August, September time period. And people were just gathering together trying to find out what the program was going to be. But if you're applying for shuttered venues grant, you could not receive any PPP money. You could still receive money from the CARES Act. And I got a little bit from the city and county. But I only got that at the very end of the year when my bars were already closed. So it did, did, did very little good. It just paid off some bills. It paid off past uh, electric bills and, and whatever along those lines, utility bills. But as you continue to go forward, they're saying, well, guess what? The shuttered venues grant is not going to cover you. But we're going to offer something else that's coming up, restaurant relief fund. So the restaurant relief fund they're talking about at the end of the year in December, and that's something that's just going to be a program coming forward. So you're waiting for money, and you're waiting for money, and you can't get any money. There's no money to get. So you're, I go to the government, and the government says, you, uh, the city and county's uh, economic uh, advisement board kind of tells me, you should go borrow a million dollars. I say, excuse me, you know any banks loaning a million dollars to somebody who has no income? They said, oh, well, then you should sell your bar. I said, do you know anybody who wants to buy a bar that you can't open? So here I am. I, I, can't, I can't sell the bar for any money. I can't operate the bar for any money. I'm just stuck in limbo, just accumulating more bills continually. Ongoing, just ongoing, continually. So eventually, um, they actually got the, PP, uh, the restaurant relief fund money going. Now, we applied for that. Once again, I had a very good controller. He had everything ready for us. We set, uh, submitted the application, and we didn't think we would get it. But because we lost 95% of our income, we went from uh, $6.5 million a year in sales to half a month sales, which was $300,000. That's all we had for a whole year. And you could not keep four or five companies going that way. Hmm. We managed this with $150,000 to keep the e &J going, just to do, have to do the paperwork, all the taxes and everything else. Currently, I still have all five operations. Why? Because I'm still doing taxes for every one of them. Hmm. It's not like they're there. They're gone. Kelly O'Neill's has been sold to somebody else. Old Tools has been sold to somebody else to operate as a Black Shamrock Tavern. Recently, I sold Ann O'Brien's uh, under a management contract. It's been a sale over time uh, because, quite honestly, it's, it's a rough road out there. It's not like, it's a, it's not like the business has come back. Uh, the business has come back to like maybe uh, maybe two thirds of what it used to be, but you can't pay the utilities and expenses that you had from the past and pay the uh, the current rates, and everything is going up because of inflation. There's no there's no return on this. I've gone from making a, a very decent salary to making below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. Well, well Bill, uh, yeah. going back to the federal funds for which you're being taxed by the state. Department of Tax. Mm -hmm. Let me let's be clear about this. You're not talking about pay, paycheck protection plan or PPP money. No, they uh, forget that. This is money from them. restaurant yes. revitalization fund or the shuttered right. venue operators grant program, right. right? Right. Okay. So here's here's my question: Why are you being taxed for monies you took from those federal programs? when people who received aid under the PPP Paycheck Protection Plan are not being taxed? It's a state tax uh, decision. And quite honestly, that's where it's at. So if my PPP money has been forgiven, right? But my, my restaurant relief fund money is not being forgiven. 
and they're they're, they're taxing in two manners. They're taxing as uh, income, which was three point one million dollars. That's three point one million dollars, and how is that going to come across on tax wise? I just don't know. But I lost it when I came back with that money to operate. We were still under restrictions. Bars had to close by ten o'clock. My bars open at have live bands at nine to one o'clock. I was. You can't open up and say you're a nightclub at three o'clock in the afternoon and make money. It's not going to happen. So we lost money uh, to the tune of about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in the first year, four hundred fifty thousand dollars in the second year, and we had to use all the money. So we used all the money, and if you didn't use it, you had to return it. So after the fact, now they're saying it's a year and a half later. They're saying we're going to tax everybody that's on that list that got that restaurant relief fund, fund restaurant relief fund money. And so in doing so, they, they could tax me in two ways. They're taxing me as GET, as a single transaction, for receiving $3.1 million. So they want, they want uh, the 4.75% of that one, which would be about $160,000. That's not chump change at all. So th that's the one decision. And then as income, if they tax it as income, I don't know how it's – I have to assume it has to go through the same – income tax process. So hopefully I'll, I'll have a loss and it won't have to be that, that one. But it could be anywhere from $160,000 maybe to half a million dollars of money that's not there. If you, if you don't mind, um, yeah. you've, you've shared that, you've shared this with some of our audience before, but sure. how big of a tax bill are we looking at for you? Uh, and are, are you going to be able to, to pay it? I question it because what I was trying to do was uh, personally coming back. I came back just to try to get um, out of debt and see if I could put my my bars in a position to sell. So I'm trying to be in that position, hopefully, so I can return something from all my effort of 25 plus years to try to have a return on my my business investment. So, quite honestly, Kili, what I am is I'm a small business advocate. I'm just talking for the sake of all small business in Hawaii. And quite honestly, the sad thing about all this is that I cite some that, no, that people say it's a mystery, and it's a, it is a mystery. There is some out there called the Hawaii Small Business Bill of Rights. And it's, uh, you can find it on the uh, Department of Economics, uh, Business and uh, Economics uh, and Tourism, right? Yeah, on their website. It's on the SRBBB, Small Business Re Regulatory Review Board. And you go there and you'll find 16 rights that you have that they profess. Come to Hawaii, you need the rights you have when you operate a business. It's all a, a, it's all a falsehood. It's a complete falsehood. Hmm. They, they've never passed them. If they want to do something for the state of Hawaii, pass that bill right now. Because for 16 months, trying to reach out to government, ask questions, they wouldn't even answer the phone. Hmm. They don't even answer the phone. They wouldn't take a request for a meeting. Now, I'm re I'm, I was represented at the time, I was representing the Hawaii Bar Owners Association. I'm representing multiple owners, and they wouldn't even take a call. They ignored so, it. Still, what are business owners doing to fight this? Uh, is the Hawaii Restaurant Association or other groups uh, uh, going to bat I, over, the, over the situation? I believe there's some members of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Some paid it, and some said, you know, I, I won't contend. Others said, I'll, 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 wait, I'll wait and see. And that's pretty much it. Is. It's a wait and see operation right now. But th what they've done is they've gone to the small business uh, administration has a list of all those people that received that those funds, and they're going right down the line auditing all of them. Now, they audited me for the tax purpose on in uh, December as a Christmas gift, as my as my uh, as my gift for uh, Valentine's Day. The, the labor department is audited me. I've been audited by the liquor commission. I'm one person trying to run everything, and I cannot do it. I'm good. That's why I'm saying I'm, my blood pressure has been so high, it's, they're killing me. So my, my action right now is give it all up and leave the state. And that's the smartest thing I can do. It's a sad thing to do, but that's what I have to do to stay alive. Because if, has... if I die, they don't. <laughs> have any state lawmakers stepped forward and tried to help you, or, or the governor uh, who— is the no. boss of the director of DOT. No, 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 no. Same, same condition during, uh, during COVID. You could not reach your government. 
And I was well, I was told uh, by members at DEBDT that Bill, your your black bulb, don't even come ask. Quite honestly. Well, this is certainly a somber okay. yeah. situation, and just to hear you say that your only recourse is to leave Hawaii, a place that has been your home, which you love and to which you have contributed so much in terms of our restaurant culture and our community, um, makes me very sad. Uh, we've only got a, a minute left, Bill. Any sure. closing thoughts or, or ideas that you'd like to share with our audience? I firmly believe there's one. if I had one mission in life here in Hawaii, it would be to introduce those laws. Uh, I'm sorry, the Small Business Regulatory Review uh, Civil Rights. They should be law. They should be law. They can't ignore this. They do it all the time. They ignore you, but you're gone. And that's not the way the government's supposed to do. Government's supposed to be a representative of the people, not supposed to be representative of the government itself. I feel that the, uh, the state government here represents the, the business, not the business people, not the perfect people, but themselves. Those in government, bureaucrats, everybody else, they, that's who they, be, they view the money's for. And that's how they keep, keep it and how they handle it. And that's sad. Bill, I, don't mind making, I don't mind making money and paying taxes. Let me bank money. Just don't keep taxing me and put me out of business. You put me out of business and you tax me for it? <laughs> Why? Profound yeah. words. Bill, True. thank you for being on the program today. And my pleasure. Please. Well, you've heard from Bill Comerford, entrepreneur here in Hawaii, who's possibly on his way out of the state. Words to think about. This is Kili'i Akina on ThinkTech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. Until next time, aloha. this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.